Welcome to this week's edition of Biz Today. I'm Nazreen Ibrahim. As you know, every week we profile a successful entrepreneur. We get experts in studio to talk to you about the latest trends in business. And we also take a look at events going on not only around the country, but around the world so that you can get your networking diary going. But this week we've got an interesting lineup. And I know also there's Women's Month being celebrated across the country, including many other events to celebrate women. So I've got two very phenomenal women in the studio today. We're talking to Jayshree Shree Naidu, head of the Standard Bank Incubator. It's a very interesting concept and a unit that's helping young entrepreneurs thrive. And thereafter, we speak to another phenomenal individual, Melanie Hawken, the founder of Lionesses in Africa. And amazingly enough, both these females have a connection in that space. So we'll hear their stories today. Okay, so let's speak to the head of the incubator at Standard Bank, Jay Sri Naidu. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the Standard Bank Incubator. It was launched in order to speed up the growth and success of startup entrepreneurs. And since it's launched, it's also provided a platform for companies to be mentored, trained, and also have a support system around them. Now, I'm very happy to welcome Jay Sri into the studio. Welcome to Biz Today. Thanks so much for having me. It's wonderful to get you in the studio finally. I know we've had multiple conversations. I've learned a lot from your insight, especially following you on social media. So it's great to have you sit down and tell us about your journey with the incubator so far. It's great to be here. Now, I, w I just want to get an understanding first of what your experience has been like in leading this unit so far. It's been quite an exciting journey. Uh, we saw it as an innovation itself for the bank and it was launched out of the innovation capability originally. And it's been going for about a year now. It's been just a fun journey. It's always great when you have to work with entrepreneurs on a daily yeah. basis. So it's a learning experience for me as much as it is for entrepreneurs as well. What are some of the services offered by the incubator? I mean, there's got to be just a bouquet of services, but are they also particular to the needs of entrepreneurs? Yes, definitely. It all depends on the stage of the entrepreneur. So we have everything from a boot camp for an entrepreneur in terms of validating a business idea. Mm from an idea to is it actually commercially viable to acceleration programs which are sector specific depending on the needs for of the entrepreneur and the level at which the entrepreneur operates and those uh, entrepreneurs are selected they then get put onto a relevant program that suits their needs and we offer mentoring coaching and growth support to these entrepreneurs as well so there's a host of services that we offer and then all of the additional product services that the bank offers through its business platforms mm. like this connect so I'm sure it would be much easier for an entrepreneur who came through the program also to be much better structured in order to access the necessary finance because that's I think is the most difficult for entrepreneurs definitely I mean if you look at what acceleration programs and incubation programs from every a sector and any corporate offers, it de-risks an entrepreneur. So mm. it makes the entrepreneur more sustainable. It gives them the necessary technical skills that they need to take their business to the next level. It also makes the entrepreneur attractive from a supply chain perspective. So access to markets becomes a lot easier. Yeah. So in a way, you know, some of the other services we offer are things like demo days or showcase days, which is quite unique because an entrepreneur gets to be put in front of large corporates. So yes, they become financial sustainable but it's an opportunity to do risk so I found out about um, the standard bank incubator through a good friend of mine Colin Craig McLeod who I know does quite a lot of yes. great work with the incubator but also through the very informative updates on social media so naturally hosting a business show it came to my attention but I've also noticed the particular programs that the incubator hosts there's quite a few of them some of them aimed at women tell us more about that Okay, so we've been very fortunate to catch some amazing networking type initiatives that have come to South Africa. So we're the country sponsor of a couple of them, um, some of them being Seed Stars, which is a global startup competition. Yeah. And we're very proud to have produced the global winner of Seed Stars that won last year and then won in Geneva this year, March. Uh, this is the second year we got behind Seed Stars and we've now taken it into several African countries as well. Second being Startup Grind, which is sponsored by Google for Entrepreneurs. So we are a country partner for Startup Grind as well, and that allows us to have monthly events in all of the provinces, Durban, Cape Town, and Johannesburg. Um, and the Startup Grind events are frequented by entrepreneurs, but 
The presenters are high profile, successful entrepreneurs that share their stories. And one of our most exciting initiatives, and I believe you'll be speaking to Melanie later today as well, is our partnership with Lionesses of Africa that focuses on growing and showcasing and basically telling the stories of female entrepreneurs across the continent with a massive database of over 180,000 female entrepreneurs on the network. And we've been fortunate where we host monthly Lioness lean-in sessions for entrepreneurs that have accessed this and we get amazing entrepreneurs that share their stories with the individuals that attend. You've been to one this morning, so you can tell from the experience that right. it's about networking and engaging and connecting and collaborating and just the amazing power of women working together to mm -hmm. make a difference. I know, I was pleasantly surprised because, I mean, that's the nature of the <clears throat> event. I was doing a Facebook Live video and a woman nudges me and whispers, can I have your card, please? And I thought, this is exactly what the space was created for. Because the conversations thereafter in the networking session after the presentations were just women who were excited about the opportunities they could explore within their own environment. Yes. And I suppose that's what the space is essentially about. Mm -hmm. It's exciting because it's not always easy to connect with people who are doing the same thing you're doing. You're absolutely right. And what Melanie and I find at many of these events is often individuals connect with one another and they get advice from other women. So they're not even coming to us to ask for advice on certain things. They connect with other individuals that can give them insights. I mean, I heard an entrepreneur giving our young entrepreneur who launched her product today to Boho with her head scarves. I heard her giving advice on where to get her fabrics and how to buy them and what to look out for. I just Amazing. overheard this conversation, but women have this natural tendency to share and to grow other people around them. And that's one of the reasons, you know, working with a platform like Lionesses of Africa is absolutely amazing in, in terms of the shift it's creating with female entrepreneurs across the continent. And I'm sure we're going to hear much more about that later in, in the show. So, Jeshi, you, you've been an entrepreneur um, prior to coming to uh, joining the corporate world again. So you understand the drive, the passion and the nail-breaking work that goes into creating something of your own. What are the common trending themes you found with entrepreneurs in your travels around the country and obviously globally through your work with the incubator? So entrepreneurs that are really successful at what they do are purpose-driven. So they've been absolutely uh, focused in terms of why they're doing what they do. And what you do is different from why you do what you do. So they have a very, very a stern view of what it is that they're trying to achieve. Secondly, they have all of their systems and processes and technical ability set. A successful entrepreneur is not one that's necessarily struggling to get by. They understand the risks, but they also understand the opportunities. Mm. And thirdly, they leverage off their connections. So we always talk about the three C's when it comes to entrepreneurs, and especially the ones that are successful. It's about being confident in what you're doing, being competent in terms of having the right level of technical skills, but also having the right connections to take you where you need to go and know who you need to surround yourself with. So very often when I lecture entrepreneurs, I ask them, do you use social media? And they say, yes. I said, not to update, I'm at a bride tonight, but That's are you right. using it to get the right business advice? Are you following the right people? Have you got your ear to the ground? So when entrepreneurs tell us they haven't heard about the incubator, I'm absolutely shocked it means they haven't been following mm. the right organizations because had they been following those right organizations they would know what we do because we've been on every platform imaginable for entrepreneurs 100 that makes sense so if i go through the list of three c's it's confidence competency competence and, competence and connections and i think from my experience also with entrepreneurs sometimes we feel like we're suffering from the imposter syndrome because the competence or the confidence in our competence is where the problem is and the connections. Yes. And you're right. 
And we find that more so with female entrepreneurs, which is why, again, we back female-based programs like Lionesses of Africa, because women are not as confident in their own skills. It's very difficult to actually get women to stand up and pitch mm. or present or really talk about their products and services or talk about what they do. I mean, one of our entrepreneurs at one of our Lioness Leaning events said, a woman would always say she has a small business. A man would always say he has a business. So it's about those little distinctions where we underplay our role as an entrepreneur, but also just in society in general. So it's important to grow that level of confidence mm. and to celebrate your competence because if you don't have it, you can get it, but you need to celebrate what you do have. I don't think just the viewers today, but I certainly took away so much from what you said there because it's something I often face. It's a struggle sometimes. You don't have the confidence in you. You have the highest level of competency in something, yes. whatever business that you run, but the confidence gets shattered for some reason or the other, and you always downplay yourself as a female entrepreneur. So I really appreciate what you said there, and I think it's good advice for our entrepreneurs to take away. Jayshri, in wrapping up our conversation, I wish we had more time because you come with a wealth of experience and knowledge in running a unit of this nature. What are the future plans for the incubator, and where do you see it going? So this year we took a, a step to take our incubator program to Durban and to Cape Town. The exciting news for us is that we're also rolling out the incubator offering into the rest of Africa. And uh, we have conversations underway with Mozambique, Nigeria, Kenya and Ghana. So the model is being replicated. We're also exciting. engaging with schools and universities to help them replicate the incubator type model as well as other corporates. So I think the incubator model will start spreading to other organizations which will just add more value to the entrepreneurial community as a whole. So we have great big plans for the incubator and wow. I hope we get to see them through. I'm sure you certainly will. It sounds very exciting and the direction you're taking as an incubator is not one where entrepreneurs are sort of and, and this is the thing, a lot of entrepreneurs may think if a certain organization is running an initiative of this nature, it's to pull them in into a certain way of thinking. But you're allowing entrepreneurs to run free in a way, G giving them free reign. You're empowering them with the tools, but not tying yes. them back to a certain ideology or a way of thinking. I think it's just about yeah. empowering them completely. And I think that's important because the incubator is not about being a place. It's a way of thinking mm. and it's a way of engaging. And for us, what's most important is the access to markets that we create for entrepreneurs and not just the business development support, but what other value can we give them as well on an ongoing basis, sure. which is what entrepreneurs actually need. Any final words of advice for aspiring and existing entrepreneurs? Do your research. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint-hearted. That's for sure. It takes a lot of hard work and determination. But if you've got the right mindset, you will be successful and leverage of the support structures that are in place and available to you. It was such a pleasure to host you on BIS today. I'm so glad we got you into studio and we had this conversation, but we need to have more. So I expect to see you back in the studio at some stage. Thank you. Thanks for your persistence. So I'm very glad that I Excellent. managed to get here today as Wonderful. well. Wonderful. So that was Jayshri Naidu, the head of the incubator at Standard Bank. I'm sure we will get her back into the studio because we have so much more to talk about and I'm sure that you took away much from that interview. When we come back, we'll be speaking with Melanie Hawken, the founder of Lionesses in Africa. Don't go away.